This episode is brought to you by Target. This episode is brought to you by Target. By Target. Yeah. I'm a little crazy. Bought some toys. Uh, You're supposed oh, to get bread, Joe. Yeah. You're supposed to get bread. <laughs> Joe, I wanted toast. Joe was supposed to get food. Uh, that just didn't happen. But he got he got he got your plastics. You got your plushies. You got your bobbleheads. Uh, and then uh, you got your <laughs> your chewy dolls. Yeah. Uh, love I that. Love him so much, despite the fact that his hair keeps sticking to my lip gloss. Oh. Riley just came in with that. Yeah, I, this, this is mine. Yeah, just, I just in case, like a, in case some trouble started up, I wanted to be ready for it. Like a, yeah. like a bomb. Well, I was carrying it around earlier, and then I actually made fun of like, like why, why am I holding on to this? And Joe was like, why would you ever put it down? And I was like, that's a valid point. So it's now, true. This is just mine now. Exactly. It calls to me. Here's the frustrating thing about him forgetting like the bread and the water and the things of that, because he went to Target.com slash Star Wars, bought all this, and I was like, just go to Target. You're already at Target.com. Yeah. Just yeah. add to the basket. Add yeah. bread. Add water. Mm-hmm. He got, Coffee. Got LaCroix. Add he did. Get <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so it is Star Wars week. So guys, uh, we are going to be talking uh, about some Star Wars, but don't worry. There's no spoilers. This is a safe space for you. Uh, we're also going to be talking about cats. We're going to be talking about cat school. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be very exciting. And we might end with a bit of a game. Mm. So I'm very excited about that. So obviously, a uh, great panel. If you don't know, uh, I'm Cameron Rice. Joined Riley Silverman. Hello. Vanessa Gritton. Ed Greer. Hot Take Machine. Ed Greer and the Jet Trooper. <laughs> that sounds my... like an 80s cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> Ed Greer and the Jet Trooper. This is my baby. Oh man. You have a play, a play date? date? Yeah. I've never uh, quickly regressed to childhood as fast as when you hand me something like soft and squishy and tell me I can hold it the whole time. <laughs> there it is. There it all is. Um, so guys, let's talk about the future of Star Wars. Rise of Skywalker, hmm. it's out. Some people have already seen it. Some people are uh, seeing it soon. Uh, some of us might be going today, even. I don't know if anybody's oh, got their me, tickets. Not me. I, I, I'm, it's like it's actually killing me that there are people that I know who are walking around the world right now who've seen this movie and like the privileged. Like yeah, the, I, I, I consider I, I consider a personal failure of myself that I've gotten to this point in my career and still haven't gotten Star Wars premiere. No, moments. Yeah, if, if anybody had your that that was a nice comment because if anybody has a problem <laughs> wrapping their head around income inequality, think. Of about people having seen Star Wars and you get no Star Wars for yeah. weeks and weeks. Yeah. No Star Maybe Wars you for don't you. get it at all. No yeah. Star Wars for you. <laughs> uh, but we're going to talk about the future of the franchise, uh, where it's going to be going from here, because this is the end of the Skywalker saga, as it's been advertised as. Yeah. Uh, but Kathleen Kennedy and Bob Iger uh, did an interview on Sunday with Variety. Uh, and the LA Times looks like uh, Bob Iger was, uh, last night, might be on the red carpet being asked about the future of the trilogy, or the future of the series. Uh, and Kathleen Kennedy said in an interview Sunday, that future Star Wars films will move away from a three-movie structure, and Bob Iger went, mm, I don't know about that. Mm. <laughs> so there is, uh, I don't know if there's trouble of brewing, but it just seems like maybe mom and dad are having discussions. <laughs> it's, yeah. hey, Saturday we're doing chores, and dad went, we got tickets to the ball game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, what do you guys think? What do you think, uh, basically, so this is what Iger said to be specific. Um, oh, I don't know about that, he told Variety uh, at the premiere when asked about the purported plan. She and I have said, well, maybe trilogies are too hard, so maybe we'll make one film and then a sequel, but we don't know. So it sounds like he's open to if somebody comes in with a hot mm-hmm. se- trilogy idea yeah. uh, to move forward. This is not to say anything about Ryan Johnson's ch- trilogy at this point. Um, yeah. So far, that is still on the table. Yeah. Um, and uh, outside of the movies, Mandalorian is doing well. People are really yeah. excited for Clone Wars, the video game. But uh, to you guys, what do you guys think about this? I'm excited to see more standalone stories, personally. Right, yeah. Um, I, actually, I really did enjoy Rogue One, and I like watching these self-contained contained stories, and uh, I do want to explore more of the universe, because we've gotten such cool glimpses of what's been happening around the Star Wars universe. Are that you KOTAR? Are you I, Team KOTAR? Oh, I'm very Team KOTAR. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I want to, yeah, I want to explore just, like, an A to B self-contained story and really kind of live with some of these other spaces. Yeah. 
I think that st I think the way to go forward is that just in general stories should dictate form. So I think that if you mm -hmm. have a great idea that you know will work best as a trilogy, then make a trilogy. If mm -hmm. you have a great idea that works as a standalone story, make a standalone story. If you just have like a cool character that you think, hey, let's just make a story about this character and see where it goes, then maybe make a series of films about that character or their, that plot line instead of it being like we have to make this three part. Like, like I wonder if the like this end of the saga, because I'm hearing a lot of people say that this, this last movie feels like nine movies shoved into one, and, and then not in a bad way, but it's like, like <laughs> it's like uh, but what is the Simpsons quote? You're oh, lobsters stuffed with tacos. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it just feels like I, I I always thought it was weird that for this final saga trilogy mm -hmm. that they didn't plan it like they didn't just go okay let's write our trilogy out and like make it a formed plan it was like we they brought, they brought in different directors at first for each movie and they were gonna give them each freedom to make their own movie the way they wanted to make it mm -hmm. and like you you have heard people talk about how like like what Ryan Johnson did was like what he decided to do with what yes. JJ left down and then be, you know JJ picked up from what Ryan did but they didn't like as a group like you know there's the story core but it feels like a weird way to make a trilogy be like let's have three con disconnected stories that then we put together as one as opposed yeah. to let's plot yeah. out a trilogy like, yeah, with I different mean, voices especially when we're living in the golden age of television and these movies are getting more televisionized mm. as it were mm -hmm. there's a there's mm -hmm. a distinct uh, machinery yeah yeah to, to make these things there's a distinct uh, process that involves many many minds and so to do the sort of DC thing which is cool what DC's doing is brilliant by going, look, I don't think we can get it together to have all these balls in the air and catch a ball and stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't think we can do that. So here you go, buddy. Your your, your Joker has a jetpack. Yeah. Here you go. Or Harley Quinn is, is fighting aliens. You do your thing. I love you. Yeah. Was that's kind of aliens. Yeah. That's kind of smart to yeah. do. But I don't with this type of thing. You know, and obviously there's there was more uh, behind the scenes tumult than we know about trying to get you know Kasdan mm -hmm. on the right page, and then when they had a uh, lay bracket do a, or do a do a draft of uh, Empire that they kind of almost threw out, but they used certain back sections of it. Right. There's a little bit more tumult behind yeah. the scenes for the original trilogy that we're privy to, but this is out and out tumult. The yeah. Yeah. out and out yeah. weirdness, you yeah. know. So, yeah. So let me ask you guys, like, what? Uh, Bob Iger calls you up. He's like, hey. What do you want to do? Not necessarily maybe what the movie you would make, but more like who would you give a movie to or who would you give? Or even if you're like, no, nah, man, get off the movies. Just do a series. Here's my here's who should do it. Here's what should happen. Blah, blah, blah. Man, I I feel like Blank it's more check. Of a, <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's a more of a reverent take on it, but I would really love to do like an all the president's men uh, type <laughs> series with the Empire. Uh, okay. very much like these are like the spin team and the people that like handle the PR uh, for because like when you think about it, how does media work in this universe? And I, I very much like the idea of like this all the president's men wag the dog style story within the, the first Star time Wars we have cigarettes on the Empire. <laughs> side. And a cigarettes and phones, like people on the hollow thing, like oh man, Constant what's black coffee? Yes. <laughs> and you can even kind of like see it on like both. Random like, characters get choked out because they made a mistake. Absolutely, and there's, not, there's not in the story anymore because like because they randomly did something wrong and then like, it's just kind of, of like <laughs> something auto corrected and it's just like. Ah, ah. I want to see that on both like the Empire and also the Rebel side, because uh, then on the Rebel side you almost kind of get to like the third um, that uh, third uh, Hunger Games book where it became oh. more like uh, this is like the image of how we're presenting the rebellion. Uh, so I want to see like the self-contained story of uh, the PR structure of both the Empire and the Rebel side. Yeah, I think of it. I want to see more of what kind of what Marvel does, which is they, they take like what's a different genre of movie and then combine it with a superhero film. Mm -hmm. And like mm -hmm. I think we've had a little bit of that with the standalone stories. Like I think like Rogue One was like a war movie. Like you had that very Guns mm -hmm. and type thing of like here's your plot you're mm. going on this it's going to lead to a big thing solo was very much like a heist film i want to see the movie that i thought rogue one was going to be when they were first promoting it which is i thought it was going to be like undercover rebel agents going in to find the death star plans mm. and we've seen like episodes of rebels that have kind of had that plot where like right. you see like the ghost crew going undercover into like imperial like areas so i think a movie like that that's like a spy movie but with mm. lightsabers like i'm into it I, as far as like who I would give it to creative wise, I think it's time to bump Dave Filoni up and give him a give him movie a movie series mm. to work on. I think that would be a good one. I mean, not, not that 
bump up is a weird phrase because he's doing killer work with the TV show. Yeah. So like, yeah. but, but, but like, give him a movie. Um, I know that Rachel Talalay has said she wants to direct a Star Wars. I would love to see her do a Star Wars movie. So I think just like yeah, bringing more voices in and finding ways to tell different kinds of stories set in this universe. And like what you were saying about DC and how like they can do weird stories that don't connect. It's harder with Star Wars to do that because you are establishing this is all happening in yeah. one universe. But to bring up Kotor earlier, like that is a way. Just this this galaxy has existed for thousands of years, right? And we know like Kotor happens like like thirty six hundred years before uh, or thirty nine hundred before uh, Battle of the Evans. So what what happens twenty four hundred years ago? What happens five hundred years in the future from here? Like let's see. Like, and that's, it, going into the future makes it hard to continue continuity presently because then you have to like be beholden to what this later movie says happened, right? But you can go to the past all you want, and you can mm. pick all these different eras up and do different things with it. Well, that's sort of the stuff I, I kind of want to see. Yeah. So for me, it's like as much as I've, however much I enjoy the standalones or things like that, my, my only issue may be a harder word, but I think my thing with Star Wars is that whereas the Marvel movies are able to do like, is whatever people want to say, copy paste, blah, 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 the Thor movies are not like the Iron Man movies, just right. even in look and tone and yeah. how they feel and styles. And I feel like Star Wars is sort of a little bit kind of beholden to a little box of like, the Empire, this, that, X-Wings, so on, so on. Mm -hmm. And so there is a part of me, I'm not saying get rid of that stuff, but I wouldn't mind seeing, like, <laughs> like my pitch is, like, do the the movie The Edge, Anthony Hopkins, but with star, in, a, in Star Wars. Oh, I love that. Like, yeah. two, yeah. Guys get, two guys get stuck on, like, a I desert planet. The edge. And they have yeah. to survive. And it's not that, oh, third act, Empire <laughs> shows yeah. up. Yeah. Right. And I feel like that's the sort of thing I'd love to start seeing a little bit, is, mm -hmm. like, I love Empire, X-Wings, and all that other stuff. Give me one movie, or one movie or story or anything that doesn't have that. Well, you know, it's funny you Lost say Rebels. that. Sorry, what? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But, <laughs> The original book, the sequel. Yeah. yeah. Well, Cleo will tell me all about that. Yeah. I mean, oh, I love oh, Rebels. The first yeah. two seasons of Rebels, I got to catch up. But, but there, was, there was a, there was a, when they weren't sure the first movie was going to succeed or not, there was like a book that was written that was intended to be a low budget sequel to the first oh, movie. Oh, uh, what and is that And it was that just called? Luke and Leia trapped on a planet, and they were trapped yeah. on the, on, um, Don't uh, they, uh, yeah, it is uh, something in the mind's eye. Yeah, and actually the planet they're on, yeah, and the, the planet they're on is the planet that Solo and the Empire are invading in the beginning of Solo, when he like, it's an infantry man. <laughs> That's the planet that they're trapped on. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupt you. Ed. Well, no, no, no. Um, um, the thing about what you said about the edge, I was talking, Emma Fife gave me a ride home uh, one of the shoots last Humble week. Brag. All right. And, well, no. Uh, <laughs> she, I, it's whole thing about her being a sweetheart. Yeah. Uh, but she was on her way to Costco. So, you know, I was part of the pat parcel. Anyway, so we were on our way to Costco. Did you get that hot dog? Uh, I, I, I didn't accompany her to co Costco. She dropped me off before. Because, you know, but, target, target hot dogs are way better than Costco. You go hot dog, not pizza? I go pizza every time I go to Costco. The orchid man for all these weeds. Um, so, so, so what I'm saying is um, I, was, I was telling her that my beef with Star Wars Wars is really odd. They really treat animals like crap in Star Wars. Too. Uh, Every like, ten seconds, they stumble upon some animal that they shoot in the face or ruin their their home. <laughs> like you're just chilling inside an asteroid one day, and Han Solo comes in there, lands in your mouth or whatever, <laughs> starts shooting the bats out of your mouth or whatever. You know what I mean? It's, it's really cruel. You want to keep like, the bats there? Yeah. In the, in, the, in the Mandalorian, he's like taking fools' eggs. Homeboys force magic in up rhinos. It, it's all and, and the, a big manatee, a big martial arts. <laughs> Are you pitching, to are you pitching Free Willy in Star Wars? I'm just saying. <laughs> young somebody, somebody, again, Rebels. <laughs> you guys, you guys, you gotta watch Rebels. All somebody the Rebels has to care about these damn animals. Hurgle, come on. And, Ooh, Star Wars Watership as, Down. As Bridger, Star yeah. Wars Watership Down, yeah. Uh, well, what that, the animals do. Oh, no. Hand animated and very British. Oh, hand yeah, animated British. with the porgs. Very British. Yeah. Oh, we're doing this. This is British style. I'm, I'm sparking yeah. this idea. I always think it's funny in Last Jedi when Chewie's eating that porg and like he like feels bad and they're all watching him eat it. And then he doesn't eat it like that. Oh, he's nice. He didn't eat it, but like it's already dead and cooked. Yeah. Like, at this point, right. well, now I, he's just wasting its dead you body. You know what would have been, would have been super funny? He throws it away, and then they run up and start eating it. Yeah. Like ah, gotcha, sucker. <laughs> we got no feelings. That's how you know they're pigeons. <laughs> Yes. Because pigeons don't have souls. <laughs> pigeons Man, just there's a, there's pigeon. a lot to unwrap. <laughs> We're going to get aviary wow. hot takes up in here. Unlocked Vanessa's you are full of pigeon hatred. takes. Um. <laughs> I mean, I like them. They let me pick them up a lot, but like... <laughs> 
All right, I'm never touching you again. <laughs> my bad. No, oh, but I was going to say, uh, my pitch for a story in the Star Wars universe, uh, they've they flirted with doing a gangster movie. Just do ah. one. Oh, do yeah. Do a straight up, like, hey, ever since I was a little kid, I always wanted to be a hut. Not fat and stuff, but a gangster. You know what I mean? Like, so, like, some kid yeah, yeah. Th th looking at the people who get stuff in that universe and yeah. how Mike makes right, yeah. gangsterism is right, and half of that universe, over half the universe. You know who'd be great as, like, the helm of that? Because then you can, like, tie it in. Uh, Benicio's character in mm. uh, Last DJ. Jedi, mm -hmm. uh, since yeah. he's just kind of like uh, hands in every pot, that'd yeah. be like a really good one for like the gangster story. <laughs> when you mm -hmm. were starting to say who we were going to helm that, I was thinking he meant director, and I was going to say Martin Scorsese, <laughs> just because <laughs> yeah. of all of his anti-franchise. <laughs> no, I'm for it. I'm, that would be fantastic. I would actually love to see a Scorsese take on Star Wars. Yeah. Just like, uh, it took him uh, five days to like that scene. <laughs> <laughs> How oh, they sell so over budget. Yeah. Space sticks. Yep. Um, so that's what we want to see. So real quick, what do you think is going to happen? What's the next thing? I think they're going to do a lot more Disney Plus. Yeah. I think that they mm -hmm. are. I think that they're going to ship, and we'll see how it plays out once we have the Cassian and Obi Wan shows. But I do think that they're going to shift to that. I do think that they're going to spend a little bit of time trying to figure out like what to do next as far as a franchise is concerned. Like, like I, I think that. If they are sincere, they're gonna like not do any more Skywalker saga films. I, I, I think it'll be at least 10, 15 years before we see another one of those. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, yeah. if they do any more of those. But yeah. yeah, I think I think what they're gonna do now is use these Disney Plus shows as a way of kind of building a new roster of talent that they can then start to like. Okay, we like what you did here. It's kind of like with like Deborah Chow on Mandalorian. Like they loved her work so much that they're giving her an entire series to work with. Oh, we want yeah. Yeah, I feel like they're gonna just do more of that. And I kind of hope they do because I think that like. I, like we talked about serialized television is the place to be to tell stories, but I also do know that like having it be behind a paywall also then limits your audience and who can mm -hmm. access it. So they are definitely going to want to keep hitting movie markets. But I think that like these mm -hmm. smaller stories we want to see will be that, and then the like mm -hmm. movies will be like the bigger budget explosive stuff. Hmm. Great. Well, it, you know, well, I was just going to say oh, it's yeah. interesting you say that because I'm thinking it's almost like. The, the big stories mm -hmm. go in the small box because you have more time you, over the course of 10 yeah. episodes. Right. I don't, who knows how much they're spending on each of these Mandalorians, but it's not cheap. Although they do keep them mostly to one location. Yeah. You know what I mean? They do certain things that are classic television, keep it on the cheap, but yeah. then yeah. they'll be... <laughs> Wait for the flashback no episode yeah, where him and the baby yeah. Yoda get trapped in the freezer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember that time? <laughs> there's, no, there's no cheap space rhinos or cheap yeah. do-backs yeah. is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So we're in one town, but boy, this is expensive as little town yeah. and all I'm saying is in the, the movies I think would be great for standalone spectacle like you yeah, think what you I, have, think, I meant yeah. spectacle no, I meant oh, like yeah. explosions but I'm saying, but as stuff. far as like story wise though they might shorten up the stories in movies and the stories in television will be obviously what they are long but like in the movies yeah one shots that they just dump 300 million dollars into watch this you want to see <laughs> and I would love along those lines give me the classic old school Jedi that all the nerds who want to Riot over the treatment of the Jedi now. Give me those 5,000 right. year old Jedis who used to lift mountains and smash them on each other and stuff. <laughs> give me that in the movie then. Just yeah. give us. You want to yeah. do that? It's the Dragon Ball movie we've always wanted. Exactly. Just call oh, it God. Jedi. Give Finally. them that. And maybe they'll say that they don't like it because it's stupid. <laughs> or maybe they'll say they'll, it's their favorite one. Or, yeah, or maybe they'll say it's their favorite one and it might be my favorite one. I'm not above yeah. it. I'm not above the Laser Sword family and how cool they are and the telekinetic. I'm not above that at all. But I am like kind of tired of it if they're going to do it in this level. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just going to do it on this level where it's like, oh, how are we going to show our Jedi powers? Yeah. I'm going to disappear. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move. I'm going to move that thing 12, 12 inches. I'm going to move a rock. Or I'm going to move a brino. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do it on that level, I'm disinterested. If we're going to see real hardcore, you read the books and you imagine all this crazy force lightning cracking planets in half, you're going to do that. Give me a $300 million movie and put it on the screen. I'll go see it with my family. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be dope. No, honestly, I'm I'm pretty much in, in agreement with y'all because I feel like the standalone movies are where we're going to see um, these uh, big uh, event spectacles, uh, more so like several interconnected stories and how they all lead into like a game changing this is where the power now lies event mm -hmm. and we're going to live with more characters via Disney Plus just because I uh, especially having just launched and only being able and having so much back catalog and that's only that can only carry you for so long and the success of the Mandalorian I think we're definitely going to see a lot more character based explorations on Disney Plus. Here's my question. Do you think Star Wars can handle building a franchise the way that the MCU did, where you kind of get these like separate 
chains of of like following this like like if like if Rogue mm. One hadn't ended the way it did and there was like three or four Rogue One movies and mm. then we had like three or four like solo prequel movies or whatever and then this isn't a great example because the timelines are off but like yeah if we have like if we did like a Poe Dameron like offshoot series and we did like a Finn series and then like would they be able to do like two or three movies of each of these plot lines and then convene into one big like everyone's together end game type thing or even like the first Avengers movie I think hmm. yes, yeah. as long as the villains are not always Empire or Empire adjacent. Yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. that's the only thing, because I think that's a little bit, going to Marvel a little bit, I think that's sort of the issue they ran into with Defenders, is that for the yeah. most part, oh, yeah. no one cared about the hand, no. but they never course corrected. Right. And so the villain was always going to be the hand, so by the time you get to Defenders, people were just like, You lost yeah. team. So I think if you do yeah. a Star Wars Avengers, you have to have different villains. It can't always be Empire or Empire Jason, because even though Solo, spoilers for Solo, I guess the main villain was not Empire. Turns out, oh, he was working for Darth Maul, so he was. Yeah. <laughs> so there's always right. got to be that degree of like... Well, that's that's why we need yeah. the gangsterism, and that's why when we, I was almost going to cheat when we said, what, do, what would you like to see? It's kind of the Mandalorian. Like, if, if they gave me infinite budget, I would come up with a really inferior version of the Mandalorian. There's because your title. <laughs> I'm not going to say it could ever do it anywhere near. The unskilled good as Mandalorian. Yeah. But, but, yeah. but I would have. So Boba Fett, basically. No, yeah. That's what, exactly. Because that's what I'm saying. It's, it's hitting all the spots I'm gonna I like. I'm going to get so many ads for that. No, it's, it's hitting all. I don't all, care. Yeah, it's hitting all the spots I like. I, I, like you, understand that Boba Fett was impressive like two times ever yeah. and had a cool looking suit and just everybody starts cool, to he had a cool lionize toy. him. He had a cool yeah. toy that was exactly. out six months before the movie was out and that's why everyone loved it. Right. Him. But the Mandalorian is like literally exploring the fact that like these are people who armor themselves up and arm themselves so that they can directly fight Jedi when a Jedi comes into town and starts talking some crap, they can show up and go, no, you're a goofy levitation, I got a rope. Yeah. You're gonna do this, I'm gonna burn your face off. Well, concentrate on your force lifting while I'm burning your face off. They're specific, <laughs> oh, you wanna slice me with your laser sword? Can't get through my best guard armor, right. fool. It, yeah. it, it's, it's like all of the things that I've always wanted to see. Somebody actually being able to contest the Jedi. Somebody, other the Mandalorians, their whole lore, there's 27,000 movies in yeah. the Mandalorian lore. It it kind of takes away a lot of the, don't at me, it kind of takes away a lot of the uh, elitism that exists in the oh, Jedi lore. I'm, I'm well documented uh, about hating the elitism of Star Wars, so go ahead, yeah. go off, I love yeah, it. Yeah, 100%. It takes away a lot of the like general elitism that I'm not psyched about when it comes to the Star Wars lore, and like anytime something is looked at as like very... Uh, black and white and uh, not looking at like the fringes that live in the middle, it starts to become fatiguing and mm -hmm. exhausting. Yeah. And that's why I like The Mandalorian and I want to live in more worlds like that where things aren't so set as like, uh, this evil is good and have a little bit more of like, who, who lives in the middle? Who's getting caught in the middle? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, very true. Yeah. Um, so, guys, that's what we uh, think. We that's what we think is going to happen. It's also what we want to have happen. Personally, I want to see David Lynch just come. He was supposed to do Return of the Jedi. Didn't do it. Give David Lynch. My God. Be like, go, man, go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but y'all, uh, let us know what you think down in those comments. And y'all, thank you so much for liking, for subscribing, for sharing. Turn on those notifications and ring that bell because that's where everything is going to happen. Ding, Ryan over there on the couch. <laughs> uh, guys, we also have a couple cool things for you to check out. We have a brand new power levels, brand new power levels. It's a tag team, tag team match. Captain Marvel, Thor versus Wonder Woman and Superman. Ooh, interesting. That's a real slobber knocker. It's a real slobber knocker. <laughs> it's a straight up slobber knocker. So power levels, go check that out. Also, available now. You can actually get this thing. Go do it. Head to iTunes. It's never surrender. It's available now. You guys, check out the links. It's in the description below. It's the Galaxy Quest documentary mm -hmm. that was made here in fandom. If you haven't seen it, if you were hearing about it, you must have been hearing about it. You gotta go check it out. It's available right now on iTunes. Plus, there's an honest trailer for Galaxy Quest. So those are the things you're going to want to check out for sure. And uh, also, uh, you guys might need to help me out on this one. Honest Games trailer for Pokemon Sword and Shield on Fandom Games. I have never played a single second of any Pokemon game. I want to be the person that introduces you to Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> because I know when I say their names, you think that I'm just making them up. Uh, no, if anything, I'll go, you can fool me quicker to be like, these are all real. And I'd be like, sure thing. Cameron, yeah. there's a chandelier Pokemon. Uh, <laughs> just hanging out. And I very much want to be the person that like introduces Cameron to playing Pokemon. 
Pokemon because it's basically fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Which it's I just have going done that. I I'm just imagining that. from the old Pokemon cartoons where like you like who's that Pokemon? It's like a black like 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 silhouette and just three hours of them doing that. It's just, just camera and it's like. Squirtle! Oh my god. Oh, that's a thing too. Oh my god, you just gave me the idea. We're gonna just uh, make Cameron try and guess the old Pokemon silhouettes and give me a name. Oh no, yes. that's gonna go. Well, that could be that when you're talking about going fishing, like just like Pikachu chilling out on the trail and then, then sees a piece of food and gets yanked up into the sky. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, if we're talking about fishing. So maybe maybe check out, maybe possibly check out the new, I guess, the Pokemon silhouette show. Yeah. <laughs> But for real, go check out Power Levels. Yes. Go check out Never Surrender uh, and the game trailer for Pokemon Sword and Shield. Let us know what you think about all of those things. It's like fishing if you caught the fish and then made them fight other fish. <laughs> it's it's even crueler than fishing. Yeah. Pokemon is crueler than regular fish. Cooper versus Cart, go. That's hilarious. Being insulting the animals. You guys see Pokemon? And we Get have back in your box. And we have one more thing going over to you on this one, Grit. Yes. Uh, we we're so lucky that absolutely all of you have made this platform very possible for us and we want to pay that forward by spotlighting organizations doing great work like 826 LA they are a nonprofit organization uh, they're dedicated to supporting under-resourced students between the ages of 6 to 18 with creative and expository writing skills and helping teachers inspire students to write and I think every single person at this table can say at some point in our childhood writing changed our lives because anybody can come from anywhere and get into writing and it opens so many doors for you so please check out 826 LA they're a fantastic organization Yes, indeed. And I loved how you did that so much that you get a you get a Vader. Yay! Yay! And y'all, I'm the father. <laughs> <laughs> you truly are the father. Uh, so, the guys, that's what we're doing. Next, actually, we are going to be doing a little game, continuing on with Star Wars Week, as I look for the script that I put <laughs> in my pocket. I cannot tell you uh, <laughs> how much of my life has been me watching Cameron dig through his pockets for paper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a, I'm like a, a character in like an old like '70s New York movie. He's gonna be like, oh, yeah, I, was I gonna, got my keys somewhere. The, the Chris Christopherson of your whole oeuvre is a lot. Where is that paper? Really, my God. Well, let me tell you the concept of the game while we while we look for this paper. So I'm gonna tell you Star Wars stories, and you guys are gonna have to determine with me: is that real or is it fake? So that's gonna be the thing. That's gonna be the determination. And if you get it right or wrong. Thank you, Ryan. Watch. I'm going to get up. Thank you, and it's Ryan. Gonna be, it's like, why did I put it in my wallet? Right why back, is it in my wallet? Don't show me the... Don't show yeah, me yeah, yeah. It's my bad. I'm going to shove it right in my face. <laughs> Riley, what are these? Worst <laughs> poker player ever. I need, a, I, need a, <laughs> I need a blast shield. So, like, <laughs> so let me guess. Let me guess all the answers. I can't see. So, real or fake, we're going to go around the table. Number one. Darth Vader has dinner with space raptors. Is that a real Star Wars story or a fake Star Wars story? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, say it's real. Real, real. I'm I'm gonna say real because Star Wars. Yeah. It was real. It was in Star Wars <laughs> Empire number thirty-one. Yeah. I knew that was a comic book. They just felt like some comic book stuff. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I have read that one. Legitimately, I have that somewhere in my collection. So that was a tie. So no one gets a toy yet. Mm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Number two. Leia's sexy outfit turns an alien bear into a raging hormonal monster. True. I'm gonna say I hope that's not true. <laughs> I think it's true. I'm gonna say it's like from one of the extended universe kind of things. It feels like it's an extended universe. That's thing. my question. Are, are are what's now legacy? Does that still count as real? Like things that well, that I can tell you the, the raptor story. The raptor story is old EU. Okay. okay. So okay. we are counting legends. That All is right. a legend okay. tale. All right. <laughs> uh, so uh, good news. It is true. <laughs> yes. Ed, you're down a point, my man. That was from Marvel Star Wars number 77. Are these all going to be comic book ones? <laughs> <laughs> that are probably, possibly video games. Okay. Okay. Number three. A sentient crying mountain can heal you with its tears. Okay, I'm going to say false. I'm going to say false. I think that's just lava, the Pixar short. Uh, Ed. Okay, I'm going to say false just to keep the score me down one. <laughs> just in case. You're playing the game. Yeah. True. Oh, damn. Oh. See if I was really Ewoks, number seven. Oh, Ewoks. Oh, that feels like I could have caught up thing. with that. <laughs> That's a lesson to you, kids. Always risk it. <laughs> <laughs> Always yeah. risk it. Conservatism gets you nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why you didn't. That's like, bad like, poker I know. That's, 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 that's <laughs> Always yeah. risk it, children. Number four. 
<laughs> Han Solo goes undercover in a pleasure ship factory. Yes. That, that's definitely true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, uh, Car Carillion, that had to happen. A Carillion Hefner ship. If it didn't, that's what I want them to make next. It's the fake. Oh, it is fake. Okay, I'm going to direct it. I'm going to direct <laughs> yeah. it. I'm oh. going to make that happen. That's going to be my Caligula. Correct. Yeah. So we're Carillion. These are now pitches. We're just, we're yeah, these are straight. <laughs> <laughs> Number five. A Jedi Master in the Great Sith War is a Triceratops with a beard. I want it to be true, so I'm saying true. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'd say true. I'm gonna say false because I'm playing poker here. It is true. Yeah, <laughs> dinosaur. Which dinosaur. means right now, dinosaur. Riley is ahead. Okay. Whoop. Number six, Luke fights a clone of himself named <laughs> Shook. <laughs> Shook. <laughs> it rhymes with Luke. So Shook, clone Luke. I'm saying false because I I I, I have a reason why I know it's false. But yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think it's false, but only for a technicality. Yeah, that's how I feel. I'm gonna say true because I'm hoping this tra tactic works. <laughs> It is fake. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> the, there is a Luke, a clone of Luke, but his name is just Luke with two Ks instead of. Absolutely oh. not. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I, think, I think it's like two U's and two Ks. Years. It's like, it's like <laughs> Well, for that knowledge, give me that droid next to you. <laughs> oh, which one? This one? Yeah, <laughs> give me that guy. Yum, 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 yum. Uh, Riley, you get oh that. Oh my gosh, yeah. For knowing about the Luke with two Ks. <laughs> <laughs> it's finally paid off. <laughs> Jedi and bounty hunters team up when they are attacked by zombie Gungans. True. <laughs> I, None of the mysticism, Ed. I gotta say, I gotta say false. That's stupid. I, zombie Gungans? Yeah. Fine. Misa want brains. <laughs> <laughs> False because I don't yeah. want to have been written in a Tom book. I, I gotta saying, say, yeah, go. I'm saying true because God is dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta, I'm gonna say false. It is true. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Star Wars Republic number 51. <laughs> That's the worst. <laughs> Number eight. Just imagine Shoot goes, for the stars, oh, kids. Oh, yeah, like, <laughs> look, look, flesh flying off. Yeah. <laughs> you get a murder droid. Yay! <laughs> Number eight. Jar Jar's dad, Jeff R. Binks, hates his son so much, he... He kills himself. <laughs> Wait, what? I, I, I think um, that's false. This. Jar Jar's dead. Jeff R. Binks hates his son so much he kills himself. Jeff? <laughs> Jeff R. Binks. Like Jeff, like J-E-F-F-R period. Like his initial is R. I'm saying fake. I'm saying fake. That's pretty dark even for Star that's Wars. fake. Good news, it is fake. His oh, name thank is God. George. What? <laughs> and it happens in Star Wars Tales number 20. No! <laughs> oh. But like you said, God is dead. <laughs> no one won that round. No one won that round. I believe at this point, point wise, I think Riley is still in the yeah. lead. Misa won a paternity test. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you need to think we stop being friends. Are there any good dads in this universe? I know, right? Han Solo. <laughs> and look where it got him. <laughs> hey, you just gotta trust your kids. Yo, cool. And the final one, number nine. Luke falls in love with a spaceship. True. Oh, I, I kind of think that's gotta be true. I'm gonna go with false just to make a little bit of an interesting game. It is true. Oh, 1995's Children of the Jedi. Yep. So I believe with that, if I'm if I am uh, correct, I believe it is the end of the tie. Oh. Uh, man, I'm gonna give it so, to the one that actually wore a Star Wars shirt today. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Riley, choose choose your figure. Uh, I think I'm gonna take this Ray figure. You're taking the Ray? Yeah. I will not. Actually, wait, hang on. Oh. I think there was a. Yeah, I'm gonna take this Ray. I'm taking this Black Series Ray. Oh, good call. Dope. Yeah, because I, I like that one a lot. Ray. Take the Constellation Ray. Yeah, I like Both the, are I like the <laughs> face on that one, but I mean, come on, Black Series. Yeah, she does have a good face on this one. Uh, the true. Well, I will say this. Actually, always. if you want this one, because I already have this droid now, and this droid is actually in here. So if you if you really want Black, I will. Okay. <laughs> Easy trade. I won't lie, I am eyeballing C-3PO, and what's the other character in there, Ed? Uh, Barfim? Oh, this one. Uh, yeah, Babu Frick. <laughs> I was not off with Barfbim. <laughs> Barf <laughs> Barfbim. Yeah, Babu Frick. I might be I might be snagging that one up for myself. Yeah. So, y'all, that is uh, what is going on with Star Wars Week. If you read any of those stories or lived through any of them, please let us know. Uh, I, of all the ones we went through, the Raptor one was the only one I was very familiar with. 
I was not familiar with George Banks. That's the only one I could picture. And <laughs> George I think Banks. When I was picturing it, I thought I was picturing the Raptors in the Star Wars universe, and then I realized I was picturing the cops in Lilo and Stitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you there. Yeah. <laughs> How is George Binks spelled? Uh, according to the script I was given, it is uh, George. G -G. Wonder, is the gag supposed to be that it's George Lucas and that's 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 Jar Jar's father? Oh, my uh, God. That's cruel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, if you can be I cruel mean, to a billionaire. I mean, from Star Wars Tales number 20. <laughs> okay. If, if it's possible to be cruel to a billionaire, that's it's cruel. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but guys, it's not just Star Wars week. It's also Cats Week, everybody. We got cats. Cats are out. Cats are in the theaters and in our lives. Uh, so let's build our future of the Cats franchise and how it will work as a universe. <laughs> <laughs> so last night was also the Cats premiere. Uh, the cast was there uh, being uh, just just fantastic <laughs> as general. I don't know if anybody follows the Cats uh, Twitter, uh, but it's bananas. Is it self-aware now? Seemingly fairly self-aware, <laughs> which is the worst thing a cat could be. <laughs> um, and uh, so Idris Elba uh, let us know that he went to cat school. The cast had to go to cat school. And here's what Idris had to say about it. Uh, what did Idris learn at cat school? You walk in and get on your knees for at least seven minutes. You prowl around, nuzzling each other, smelling each other, and rolling around. Seven minutes seems short. I feel like it would have been a lot longer of a, like, I've been in some yeah. improv classes where that, that, that session lasted longer <laughs> than that did. See, to me, the nightmare would be I have very bad knees, and I oh, cannot yeah. be on them for long at See, all. The nightmare is, A, that's seven minutes of me, like, prowling around with Idris Elba, and I'm like, well, I have about four minutes before I just start like crying because I'm overwhelmed. Uh, but also, like, <laughs> <laughs> all of my interactions with cats aren't like nuzzly and smelling each other. Like, my cat's a jerk, so it'd mostly just be me jumping on tables and like kicking off water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so here's the question What else should be happening at cat school? What would you well, want to Definitely, you want to definitely see all that gravity stuff. Like, they, but they got to, you don't, they don't just, some, most of them don't just knock stuff off. They just kind of, they test you, they look at you, they yeah. test the thing, they say, what are you doing? Uh, yeah. And then it eventually yeah. ends up off, yeah. and then they go, Oh, what? What? Yeah, it's and then they go, like... oh, guess what? And then, they, you know, they're just Oh, no, jerks. Barf, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> barf, barf, barf Ben and, and C-3PO. That's how we got the red arm. <laughs> <laughs> It's not unlike actual Jedi school where it's yeah. all about concentration and being yeah. able to like be mindful of your space while you're knocking stuff off and you're right. doing, like you're you're focusing on your true enemy while you're doing yeah things. yeah <laughs> yeah indifference yeah you got you got you to learn the exact amount of time to beg for someone's attention and exactly when to pull back the second they give it to you yep. that's yes. got to be a cat school also right. 3 a.m. classes and once you break back into cat school and then you just run around for no reason and yeah. wake up everyone <laughs> selecting catch, catch the red laser <laughs> selecting the best place in the house to vomit to make it the worst for anybody else involved in the house. <laughs> Behind the fridge. Yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> where, where, where a bare foot will go without looking the next morning. Yeah. Also, oh, yeah. also, you have to be trained in clawing open bags of bread and buns and stuff and like mm -hmm. taking maybe a cursory bite and just leaving it that way. What is it with cats and carbs? I <laughs> like, legitimately can't so. eat That's them the other yet. Jerry yeah. Seinfeld show. <laughs> How to cats make someone... <laughs> How Today to, I yeah. got some carbs. How we got a bun someone... and a talico. <laughs> a talico. <laughs> On crackle. How to make someone who is overfeeding you feel like they're starving you? That's what they're looking for. The 5 a.m. bop someone on the face because oh, yeah. now you're ready for breakfast. Also, this how morning. to find a place to perch so you can feel superior to everybody. Yeah. yeah. That's a big finding high ground. It's it's it, Jedi and cats yeah. are obsessed yeah. with the high ground. <laughs> it's it's all the whiskers. I have the high ground. <laughs> Now, here's my question, though, because that's great for Idris Elba. My honest question is, uh, Ian McKellen or Judy Dench, who no. are amazing actors, a little, little on the older side, are they really getting down no, on their knees no. and crawling around like cats? Deuteronomy's not doing flips and snell. Deuteronomy walks in <laughs> and makes declarations. and I, I'm just imagining someone even like looking at Ian McKellen, all connected on your floors, and he's... <laughs> this the, the deadpan stare you would get after mm. trying to do that. Oh, I That's also that. a cat reaction. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. if anything, they're just doing older cat stuff. Like they're just walking into the room and taking like a really long stretch, and then there's an actor that's paid to go oh, big stretch whenever they do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what you do in cat stretch. Yeah, and and there are supercilious like sort of layabout cats. Yeah. yeah. Meaning cats, I guess. But you know what I mean. There are cats who just sort of like they stroll in, sit down. 
wait for dinner time, kind of like me <laughs> at home. You know, they just <laughs> stroll in and just sort of wait for things to be proffered to them, play with me, try to engage me. Yeah. You know, so I could see an old older people playing that sort of yeah. game. Yeah. I would want to see a tiny box in the middle of the room. They all try and get in it. <laughs> oh, I can't believe none of us thought of that yet. <laughs> tiny box. Yeah, this <laughs> tiny box. Yeah. Next to expensive toys, and then the, the box the toys came in. That's yep. where you yeah. can see. Yep. Well, it's, it's like teaching the cats to be like uh, Indiana Jones and Indiana Jones Part 3. Just pick the dullest, crappiest thing. That's always the way. Don't pick the gilded stuff that your master paid a bunch of money for. No. Pick the worst box and get in it. Chose wisely. Yeah, choose wisely, cat. <laughs> um, Y'all, but that's going to wrap us up for today. Today. Again, it is Star Wars week. It's Cats week. Uh, and uh, we got some toys to play with yeah, here. And uh, I'm going to go maybe go bother Joe about maybe uh, getting some other stuff from Target. And you're going to be. Get how much is that going to be yours and how much of that is going to be Kyle's, your cats? It's going to be mine for 20 minutes and then it's going to be hers the second she drags it into the bed and, <laughs> <laughs> and murders it. Yeah, um, she's going to tear it open. Yeah. Going around the table. Riley, where can people find you online? Anything you want to plug? You can find me on Twitter at Riley J. Silverman. And you can find the podcast that I write for. For Trouble Waters on the Max Fun Podcast Network. Fantastic, Gritten. You can find me on at Ness Gritten on all forms of social media, and you can also find uh, my uh, sketch team, Night Church, under Hill Night Church. We make horror comedy stuff. Mm hmm. Ed. You can find me making uh, Stormtroopers break dance on SJU. <laughs> <laughs> um, do the little moonwalk. They dance now? They dance now. They dance now. Yeah. Um, no, uh, my, my podcast, uh, Nerd Goat Podcast, uh, we inter we talk to interesting people about their favorite fictional character. You can check that out on nerdgoatpodcast.com or anywhere you get podcasts. I'm also collaborating with Billy Business, mm. doing a podcast called Reboot It. Our recent episode, we, we rebooted... Uh, Back to the Future in about an hour. It was an insane fool's quest, and people are really liking it. Nice. So it's on YouTube, so you can check that out. And uh, also, yeah, just Ed Greer Destroys on Twitter. And thank you guys so much for your support. Okay. I've, I get messages every day from people who see me on here who look at some of this other stuff. It's really awesome. Thank you guys so much. Ed, you get a red Stormtrooper. That was such a good plug. Aww. Mm -hmm. oh, wonderful. Uh, as for me, you can find me on Twitter.com slash, uh, or at uh, the Cameron Rice. I was going to say the old Jurassic Alien one. It's been a minute. I haven't oh, yeah. had that one. That's you old. Switch that had to be professional. <laughs> professional. professional. Uh, so at the Cameron Rice, go check that out. Also, go check out my photography, Cam Rice Photo. Uh, also, stay tuned because down the line, uh, probably about a week or two, me and Gritten started a Stephen King podcast. So the first episode of that will be dropping soon, where we talk about Mogwai <laughs> for Happy a event. real long time. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Um, and guys, make sure you follow this show at Screen Junkies U. Have a great Star Wars week. Beware of spoilers. And we'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good one. Psh. This holiday, the toys of a generation of Star Wars fans come home. Explore a whole galaxy of Star Wars toys available at Target.